Uh, I think the previous speaker said all the organs do have vitamin D receptors, except that he missed out on reproductive organs, thinking that I'm going to talk about it. So deliberately, I think he missed out the reproductive uh, organs. Anyway, uh, to start with, well, you all know that role of vitamin D is there for <coughs> uh, calcium absorption, bone growth, and achieving peak bone density. But you also need to remember that it's a very potent immune system modulator. Thereby, if it is in good serum levels of vitamin D, they do prevent autoimmune disorders. It also inhibits uncontrolled proliferation and stimulates differentiation of cells, thereby preventing common cancers and skin disorders. And of course, he's also mentioned about it helps in secretion, increase in secretion of insulin, as well as increasing insulin sensitivity. This one slide itself will show you that higher the levels, lower the prevalence of all these common disorders, what I was mentioning. Now, these are the classical effects, which I need not go about uh, vitamin D. And all these are non-classical effects, there's extra skeletal effects where what we are going to deal with is ovary, testes, immune system, endometrium, and placenta. Before I start, I must tell you that I am fully convinced that vitamin D does have a role in extraskeletal system. And this is why I am showing this picture. This is a child with congenital ichthyosis who came to us at All India Institute. And the professor of dermatology called me who works with me and said, what should I do with it? And uh, this, since this child also had rickets, we thought that we will give him high dose of vitamin D. And uh, he says, how much? So I say 60,000 international units every day for 10 days, so that we make it as 6 lakhs units, like what we treat rickets. After one week of high dose, you see the anti-inflammatory action of vitamin D. There's no redness in the eye, skin inflammation is gone. And I just couldn't believe that this is the same child whom I'd seen about seven days back. This is another child clearly showing you the improvement. And look at the fish-like scales which did improve after about three months time. And this is the scaling at the back, neck and this, how the improvement has taken with this vitamin D. And this is the paper that we published where we said this is a new promising therapy for congenital ichthyosis, mind you. And Professor Setu Raman was named as the Dermatologist of the Year for this original research. Another point that I want to make is about this paper from PGI Chandigarh, where they used nanovitamin D supplementation and how dramatically it reduced the activity of ulcerative colitis. This was a randomized trial where oral nano supplementation again the same dose of 60,000 per day for about 8 days so that the levels of vitamin D that is serum 25 hydroxy remains between 40 and 50. Those are the children they did tremendously benefit in terms of remission, healing and less of relapses. And now she told me that the patient themselves go on taking vitamin D when they have ulcerative colitis along with this. So before we go further on reproductive, what really is the status of vitamin D deficiency in India? Well, this is the first, I'm going to tell you only the landmark papers. This is the first work that we did in early 2000 published in American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, where we had about 5,000 children, healthy school children, 10 to 18 years old. And what we saw was that the clinical evidence of vitamin D deficiency was in 10.8% of healthy children. 92% and 84% of different children from different schools had vitamin D less than 20. This is another study which was done by Abdish's group where they uh, evaluated medical professionals across the country and if you see the circle, the red portion is what is showing you the vitamin D deficiency. So it's across the country that you have severe vitamin D deficiency. Then we did this in elderly people, again we found the same 92% had vitamin D deficiency and the mean levels are just 9.7 and 9.6. Coming to pregnancy, we had about 541 pregnant women in three different trimesters. And again, look at the vitamin D deficiency in all the three trimesters. And there was a strong positive correlation 
between vitamin D levels of mother and infant pair. And when we did the study on nutritional status of exclusively breastfed infants and their mothers, we evaluated about 180 healthy lactating mothers with their breastfed infants 2 to 24 weeks. And again, high prevalence of vitamin D in mothers. But look at in the infants, clinical features of vitamin D to the tune of 4%, 80 to 91% had vitamin D deficiency. And those infants who were born to mothers with vitamin D less than 10 had four times higher risk of developing moderate to severe vitamin D levels. So the studies across the country clearly reveal that there is high prevalence of vitamin D in Indians of all age groups in both genders and it's a major public health issue which needs urgent attention. So this is to give you an outline of what we are dealing with in this country and young ladies or girls who like to be pregnant and are not being able to conceive, they, they also are one of those groups who suffer from severe vitamin D deficiency. Now how did this interest in vitamin D side off in reproductive health? The interest actually was developed when they noticed that there were vitamin D receptors present in most organs of the body including the reproductive organs. And the association of vitamin D deficiency and infertility was postulated because these vitamin D receptors in the male and female reproductive organs did facilitate the biological action of vitamin D. Otherwise, what would vitamin D receptors do in these organs? Then, based on several animal experiments, that vitamin D was seen to be associated with clinical pregnancy outcomes of IVF and ICSI cycles through their effect on whether it was development of follicle and embryo or it was influence on the endometrial uh, receptivity or it was embryonic implantation and gestation. So all the animal experiments very clearly showed the benefits. And this is again he has already dealt with how 7-D hydrocholesterol gets finally converted into active vitamin D which works on the target cells wherever it may be. And the reproductive organs, these are the target cells, testes, placenta, uterus and ovaries where here they deal with the semen motility and semen capacitance. In placenta, we have already shown you during pregnancy high prevalence of uh, GDM and uh, preeclampsia and uh, small for gestation babies. Uterus implantation, ovaries, PCOS, you just heard. So, what is this biological activity of vitamin D? Now, it acts by two functions. One is genomic and the other is non-genomic. Genomic function is the one where the vitamin D binds to vitamin D receptors in tissues, which in turn further binds to retinoic acid receptors, becomes a heterodimer and acts as a transcriptin factor. And this is how the genomic action of vitamin D takes place in all the tissues of the body. And but it takes several hours to few days because the transcription takes place, the changes take place. So it is not an instant kind of an action. Whereas non-genomic action is where the vitamin D binds to vitamin D receptors on the membrane and it acts immediately. For instance, calcium absorption in the intestine and kidney. These are non-genomic actions. You did hear uh, him talking about vitamin D in the immune system. Well, it does, vitamin D does inhibit T helper cells, the immune response because of T helper cells, that is the innate immunity and it helps by decreasing the secretion of inflammatory cytokines, which the previous speaker mentioned and these are IL-1, IL-2, tumor necrosis factor, interferons, etc. But it also enhances T2 immune response whereby they elevate IL-4, IL-5 and IL-3 which improves your immunity and thereby through this action it leads to reduction in the autoimmune disorders and later I will tell you how the same action helps in implantation. So vitamin D and male reproduction, well the first thought started off when there was a comprehensive analysis of potential role of vitamin D. It was done by Bloomberg in Denmark 2000, where he first time showed vitamin D receptors in human testes, ejaculatory duct, 
mature spermatozoma, thereby suggesting a pivotal role that vitamin D plays in spermatogenesis and maturation of human sperm. And later on in 2011, he showed in 300 young men for semen quality that there was a positive correlation between serum mobility, progressive mortality with vitamin D was observed by him and thereby he concluded that men with lower vitamin D levels had lower proportion of motile sperms or progressively motile sperms though they were morphologically safe. Then there was this gentleman Abasi Hormozi who did evaluate in 2017 some Iranian subfertile women or oh sorry men and he showed that it was not in normospermic men but it is only in oligoesthenotetrazoospermic men that there was a correlation that means only those who had low sperm count they were not actually very motile are the ones where this correlation was seen but in contrast Ramalau, who conducted another cross-sectional study in 347 Danish young men to see the association between vitamin D and male reproductive functions clearly showed that men with high levels of vitamin D in fact had lower sperm count, lower percentage of sperm with normal morphology and 11% lower free androgen index as compared to men with adequate. So this was in absolute contrast to what Blumenberg had shown earlier. Now coming to in vitro fertilization outcomes, well there are several reports suggesting a positive correlation between levels of vitamin D and increased level of achieving clinical pregnancy. Oscar was the first who carried out his study in New York to determine the outcome of IVF cycles in relation to vitamin D in follicular fluids in 84 infertile women and he found significant correlation between serum vitamin D and follicular uh, vitamin D levels. They observed that women with higher vitamin D levels were more likely to have positive outcomes of IVF and concluded that vitamin D supplementation given to deficient patients could improve fertility outcomes. Then the next study was by Garbadian et al who evaluated infertile Canadian women and again showed that if those who had sufficiently higher vitamin D levels also had significantly higher rate of clinical pregnancy as compared to those who were deficient. And the third author who actually did show correlation was Polyzoz who in 368 infantile women undergoing IVF and intracytoplasmic sperm injection with day 4 single embryo transfer clearly showed that clinical pregnancy rates were significantly lower in vitamin D deficient women compared to their non-deficient counterparts 41 to 54 and then Rodek et al again showed lower clinical pregnancy rates that is 37 versus 78 percent and lower live births 31 to 59 percent in vitamin D deficient Caucasian females as compared to vitamin D adequate subjects. And the last person to really show the benefit was Pafoni et al who did show in five, one, 154 Caucasian women that clinical pregnancy was 20 percent in women with vitamin D less than 20 as against 31 percent in women with vitamin D more than 20. That these are five six studies which actually show that yell vitamin D does have a role to play in, in successful clinical pregnancies. However, there are three more studies, three other studies which did not show any critical role in the outcome of ART with vitamin D deficiency. But most surprising was a study by Eric Fandis et al who actually suggested detrimental effect of increasing follicular fluid vitamin D on IVF outcomes in infertile Greek women. So this is the only study which actually showed a detrimental effect of increasing vitamin D. So as earlier speaker said these discrepancies could be due to number of reasons whether it is age, rage, 
ethnicity, BMI. The design of the study is important. Analysis of the study is very important. And these discrepancies, though despite these discrepancies, the combined results indicated that vitamin D deficiency may have a negative effect on outcome of assisted reproductive technology. Then there are few studies which did show you the correlation between serum 25 hydroxy D and follicular fluid levels of vitamin D. This finding was important because it suggests to you that peripheral vitamin D status indeed is a reliable indicator of vitamin D availability in the ovary. So I mentioned there are only nine studies so far showing association between vitamin D and clinical pregnancy all of which five are showing you a definite correlation whereas the other three are not. There are only two studies showing you association of vitamin D and ongoing pregnancy which are both showing that and there are only three studies evaluating association of vitamin D and live births. We do not have any of studies from our country unfortunately to give you some data from there and the possible mechanisms of vitamin D action I did mention earlier whether it is due to development of follicle and embryo as it's been shown in these various experiments or it is the influence on the endometrial receptivity or it is an action immunomodulatory effect of vitamin D through which affects the implantation and early pregnancy. We, we really are at a loss but clinical studies have clearly shown you that pregnant women with vitamin D deficiency are more likely to develop preeclampsia, small for gestational age child, gestational diabetes and cesarean section. So there I conclude that uh, though there are positive effects of vitamin D on the effectiveness of IFAF treatment, however there is no consensus still date on its influence on infertility and it is therefore advisable to keep optimum levels of vitamin D in PCOS as my speaker earlier mentioned, endometriosis, male infertility and IF techniques. As the sample size of some of these studies are small, study characteristics are different, more random cohort studies are needed to uh, be undertaken. And this is a recent randomized control trial which is going on called the Sundro trial where there are two centers which are going to see the impact of vitamin D supplementation on the reproductive outcome. The results, the study is going on, the results are still not out. So a few words of wisdom, the richest wealth as they say is wisdom, strongest weapon is patience, best security is faith, the greatest tonic is laughter and surprisingly all of them are free and so is wonder vitamin D. So please expose yourself and thank you very much.